so cool. It is rather wondrous. It's difficult to tell in here, but we should be almost halfway up the tree. Gil, are you all right? Huh? No, no, I I'm, I'm fine. Really, fine. Just, <laughs> not, not so big on heights. Really? <laughs> wow, Gil. Huh? What's that singing? this place. <laughs> That's some greeting for an old friend. So, why don't you answer me this time? Why have you come to this place? It seems to me that you abandoned my Julius here. You left him to tend to your spiral tree, forgotten in your sacred land. You claim to care for him, but you let him linger here. If you didn't truly wish to part with him, you should have told him long ago. Perhaps you should have spoken your mind when poor Romeo was offered up. Alas, if you'd only gone with him, if you'd only gone to his aid, then maybe innocent Romeo would not have fallen so. Maybe then Julius would not have contracted the Black Plague, would not have coughed up his blood and burned his skin with scars. What of the day when he came to you with shadows upon his eyes and told you he would leave your little family? If you'd done more to stop him then, maybe he'd not have been alone in the spiral tree, with the ghosts of Aragami slain, arrayed against him. I tested you. Tested humanity. Even if I hadn't, you would still face the same fire. Fools. Beyond fools. You have fated yourselves to burn. For every challenge you have faced, you have failed. Time and time again, you could have turned to me. And yet, naught but silence. You were given one last chance. One final opportunity to cleanse this world in peace. And you were still. You waited. So now, once more. Tell me true. Why have you come to this place? <laughs> You are ever defiant. Oh, my little warrior. So, you have resolved to bring Julius back, have you? Will such a simple thing save this world? To resurrect your mistake? Very well, my children. Your hand is dealt, and fate stands ready. If you desire to take him, you are more than welcome to try. Yet know this. Tearing free singularity from my devouring apocalypse will bring a terrible wrath. It will drown you in conflagration. And all the while, you ponder. Save you. Save your allies in blood. Does anyone else truly wish to see Julius return to your world? <laughs> Captain! Captain, are you okay? Look! There! It's...
I can accomplish this one. I can do it. I want to help. Don't overdo it. You need some rest. Please, rest. I can take it from here. You felt it too? That origami's resonance. I'm certain I know it. Yeah. It felt almost exactly like the captain's blood power. Hold tight! Look, what are those things? <laughs> Everyone, hold fast! Livy! immediately. Nana, can you take hold of Livy? She'll need our help. Got her! Gil, cover our retreat. The last thing we need is an ambush. On it. Far East Branch, come in. We're falling back to the mouth of the tree with injured. Send an escort team to meet us. Thank you for your report, Captain. Do you have a moment to spare? I've been hoping to speak with you. As, uh... As... Livy. She was raised at Magnolia Compass Orphanage by Rachel and Leia. You could almost say she was a test run for Julius. We found out too late that her home for the lost was only a cover to test Bias Factor's adaptation on children. Livy was the first she found that showed any true promise. But Rachel... Rachel named her a failure. Libby could adapt, and well, but not before experiencing violent rejection of the core bias factors. Each attempt drew from her very life. Once Rachel discovered that Julius could adapt with no side effects at all, Livy was discarded. And here I am asking her to continue to sacrifice and bleed to save Rachel's pet team and her beloved Julius. I wish it weren't so. Livy is logical to a fault. In all my years with her, she's never taken action I could not understand. But I don't know why she fights at your side. In the end, I suppose it's of little consequence. All that matters, all that I ask, is that you keep her safe. Thank you, Captain. That'll be all.